All right, in this presentation, we'll briefly discuss, and I mean very briefly discuss, principal component analysis. Uh, so what is principal component analysis? It's really a good utility to use uh, or method to use to explore big data sets or data sets in general. It can be used to create predictive models. Uh, it can reduce dimensions to help make sense of data by identifying influential variables in the data. Um, and a really simple example for this might be if we start with a data set that includes household income, zip code, square footage of the house, family size, um, mailbox color, right? We have all this data and we want to make sense of this data. Uh, we don't have any pointed questions, but we just want to kind of see what the data can tell us. Um, we might use principal component analysis and we might determine that, hey, you know what, household income, family size, and the square foot of, of the home is, is sort of related. Um, it emerges from the data is important. And then we might also see that the number of pets and the plot size also um, become important as well in the data. Um, the data set that we used for this particular example was sourced by uh, US Census data, BEA data, and NH, or I'm sorry, NCHS data. Um, there were 44 data points that were measured, including things like total population, personal income, uh, federal government expenditure, and so on. So high level, what is principal component analysis uh, in terms of a process? The first thing you wanna do is review the data. So look for any variables or records that maybe we could exclude. Um, the next step is to use statistical software package to analyze the data um, and identify principal components. Um, and then the third step is really to understand the meaning of those principal components and the variables that emerged as significant. Um, step one, we might want to, uh, again, look at uh, where we can reduce the data uh, on our own without using principal components. Uh, in this particular data set, we, we can see that um, the data is mostly at a county level, but there were some aggregate rows at the state and at the country level, so we removed those. Um, we also found some data that uh, was incomplete. It was missing a lot of information, and so we also elected to remove those. The second part uh, would be the idea of removing columns or variables that were measured, either because they're duplicates, they're highly correlated to another column, um, or they're an aggregator subset of another column. If you look at uh, this particular data set, you can see here there's six different variations of population that were included. Um, and so instead of keeping those six variations of population, uh, we elected to remove those and keep one variable, uh, which is just general population. You lose some resolution in your data, but um, for the purposes of what we're doing here, uh, it, it's sufficient. The next step is to rely on statistical software. So in this case, we use Jump. Uh, we push all of the data into the statistical software and we begin to run a principal component analysis on it. And from this analysis, you can see uh, which components are most prolific. In this case, um, components one and components two uh, were retained for our further analysis. The next step is to look at which variables within those components are most significant. You can see on the right here in the factor loading plot that components 2, 72, and 79 were significant uh, and grouped together, and that component 2 uh, was, was comprised of, of the variable 73. And identifying the most influential variables, right? So uh, these those numbers that we just saw were actually coded variables. So two represents uh, resident population, 72 represents manufacturing total value of shipments, um, 79 represents the federal government expenditure. Uh, and those all comprise component one. Component two is comprised of wholesale trade. Um, so that's establishments that fuel a retail sales market. Uh, step three uh, is really just considering the meaning of what you've just done. So We've identified two components uh, and four different variables that comprise those two components respectively. Um, the first component was built from population, manufacturing total, and federal government. Um, and these are all things that might be considered economic inputs. Uh, whereas factor two was focusing on wholesale trade, which fuels the retail sales market, um, which might uh, be considered economic outputs. The idea of naming or, or sort of extrapolating meaning from the components is, uh, is really more of an art than a science. Um, but it's all about, uh, you know, sort of the trends in the data uh, and the information uh, that can be gleaned from it that emerges from this, this sort of analysis. Um, so in summary, principal component analysis is a really good way to explore data. If you don't have pointed questions, you can kind of see what data or what information emerges from the data. Um, it can help you reduce your data set, um, and it can also identify significant relationships in and between the data.